What's going on everybody and welcome to part two of the Kiwi Cross Platform GUI development tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be doing is continuing along. We're trying to make this chat application and the first thing we need to be able to do is fill out that form and then like submit the form, right? So we need a button to click, probably says join or something like that. And then besides just throwing in the button, we also need to handle for the event when that button is clicked. So or tapped or whatever. So that's what we're gonna be doing today is buttons, events, and um, just a quality of life update immediately out the gate. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we've, we've got these, uh, these things all added already. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is throw in a button. So we're gonna say from kiwi.uix.button, we're going to import button. Now we wanna use that button. So again, all the widgets are placed in order. So we can just like throw in a button, right? So we could say self.join equals button. And then we could say the text here is join, okay? And then we could say self.add a widget, self.join. Whoops, don't run it there. Cool, so I'll save that and let's just run that real quick. Kind of went off screen, but anyway, there you go. IP, port, username, and then there's a join button. Doesn't do anything when we click it though. Now, I kind of want the join button over here. <laughs> so this is actually really simple. There's like, there's a million things that we could do to get this button to be moved and to place things specifically, especially if you want to start getting fancy with layouts inside of layouts. And you know, you could get really cool with this. You could just have like a grid layout, four row, or yeah, four rows. And then each row is its own two column layout. And then you got bang, 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 bang. And then join could be the whole thing down here, right? So yeah, you could get super fancy. Or you could just self.add widget in uh, an empty label. <laughs> so I'll save that, uh, run that. So we're adding that before we add the widget of the button. And boom, we got the button oriented over to the right. Uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, like I said, if you want to fix it and do it a different way, have at it. So that's buttons, okay? Uh, but obviously, we want these buttons to do stuff when they're clicked. So what we want to do is bind a function to the button. So that's pretty easy, actually. So what we're going to say is self.join.bind. That's just an attribute, basically, or a method of these, this button that we can run. And then we're going to bind what? Well, we're going to say on press um there's there's probably all kinds this is the only method i've ever used but i would wager maybe if you hovered over it or maybe on a on hold or something you might have a thing i don't know anyway there's probably methods like that you could just assume they exist uh so check those out in the api documentation on press what do we want to do self dot join button Seems to make sense, right? So we're gonna run a uh, method called join button. Now that method doesn't quite yet exist, so we better probably make it. So what we're gonna do is define, and just so it's clear, uh, we're in the class connect page, we were coding in the init method, now we're just making another method. So define join button method and self, and when you click on the button, it's also going to pass, or when you bind, I don't know. Anyway, it's gonna pass instance, we're gonna handle for that, so we're gonna also take an instance so here, uh, we're gonna get, we can grab really whatever we want, right? Because if someone's filled out these forms, like it's a, it's a live instance, right? So as people are putting text inside of these fields, we can actually grab that uh, and then do something with it. So not only, so just like later on down the road, we're gonna talk about scheduling things and just running things. So just understand that everything's running like live as you put things in. It just so happens that we're like scheduling things and it seems very scripty as we click buttons or whatever, but it doesn't have to be like that. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, so this event here, we're running the event. Now let's just grab some stuff real quick. We're just gonna say port equals self, um, self.port.text. Uh, we're gonna say IP equals self.ip.text and then username equals self.username.text. So we're just grabbing the text values of those fields at the time of the button press. But again, like I said, you can grab values of fields at any point. You can have all kinds of reasons why you might grab that stuff. So anyway, uh, port IP username. And then for now, let's just say print F, uh, actually let's say attempting to join IP 
colon port as username. Okay, so let's save that. And did I close? I guess I closed my console window. Awesome. I love it when that happens. Uh, <laughs> let's just run that again. Uh, what do I do here? There, pi-37. I forget what I called this. Key app 2 Okay, run that. Let's not close the console window next time. Idiot. Okay, so IP, let's just, I'm just going to throw in some stuff really quick and talk about that. Um, I hit join, and actually I'll bring this back. Um, so we're attempting to join um, this colon this as this. Wow, well, both one, two, three, four. Huh. Uh oh. Oh, have I hot? Maybe because I highlighted? I don't know. Something hinky going on there. There we go. Okay, cool. So I'm going to bring this down here. I'm going to close this. Um, so one thing right out of the gate, it's very tedious to keep filling out the. IP, the port, the username, chances are we're going to keep going to the same one every single time. So so both in development and then in actual use case, uh, we probably actually just want to like save these things. So I'm just going to make that final quality of life update for us real quick. And um, so the first thing that we're going to do is basically right here, we're just going to say with open uh, prev details dot text. With the intention to write uh, as f, we're going to say f dot write, and we're just going to write basically this with some commas. So I'm just going to copy pasta, comma, comma, cool. Okay, so we'll save that, fix this for pep8, and awesome. So. With that, now what we want to do is we're going to import import OS, and then somewhere in this init method, uh, we're going to get the initial values for IP port and username. So the first thing we need to know is if that file exists, because if this has never actually been run, that file won't exist. So if os.path.is file uh, prev details.txt, if that's the case, with open, this file with the intention to read as f. Uh, we're going to say uh, the details of that file are, let's see, f, we're going to say d equals f dot read. And then we'll actually just go ahead and split by comma. And then, what was it? Port, yeah, ip port username. So we'll just say prev ip equals d0. And then let me just take this and then we'll paste that twice. One, two, pre IP port user nombre. If that's the case, do that. Otherwise, we need to handle if it doesn't. So we'll paste that in. Come on, me. Okay. Oops. Knocking stuff over. Um, okay, and then what we want to do is add in the starting text. So, um, so in text input, we can also pass a metric or a parameter <laughs> called text. So in this case, it would be prev IP. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is just take this copy and then I'm going to paste here and paste here now this would be prev port and then this will be prev username cool okay that should be everything so let me go ahead and save that let me just rerun this and uh, oh because maybe because I had the file already so I've already done this um, <laughs> Yeah, just like loaded it. I'm gonna delete those real quick and just test to make sure everything's working the way I have it now. Let me just rerun that. Oh, so good thing. Uh... Oh, right. Duh. <laughs> okay, these should be empty. I'm glad I tested that. Uh, so make these empty. So if the file doesn't exist, we can't split anything and D doesn't exist either. So nice, good work everybody. Basic Python skills. All right, so now it is empty. And yeah, I'm just going to fill out what I had before. So 127.001 port 
port. One, two, three, four is fine for now. And Centex, we hit join. And sure enough, attempting to join. I'll close that and then we'll rerun that one more time. And sure enough, um, everything's there already for us. So we don't have to keep retyping it. So uh, the IP import might change depending on what you guys plan to use for the server uh, or the sockets, basically, or the socket server. Um, I'm probably going to host mine and I'm going to work off of that. Um, but I'm going to take that down before I release these videos because there's probably all kinds of security issues that could happen. So, because one, we're passing through Kiwi. Two, we did very little security checks for the socket based tutorial bit. So that seems pretty risky to let that run live and let you guys use it. So <laughs> I'm just going to have you guys probably run it locally on a local port or something like that. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, okay, so that's it for now. Quick shout out to my most recent channel members, Ivan, Dixon, and Matthew. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for your support. If you don't know, you can join by clicking that beautiful, beautiful blue button that just beckons your click. <laughs> Okay, so in the next video, what we're going to talk about is what happens once we click join. So yeah, we're like handling the event, but we actually probably want to actually do something, I don't know, useful. So we need to like change the screen. Like once we click join, we don't even, we don't want this layout anymore. We don't really want the screen anymore. We want the chat screen thing. Um, yeah, so how do we do that? So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Also join the Discord, discord.gg slash. Sentex. Uh, that's it, everybody. See you next time.